Well, we are finally done for the last run of the day, which is Dark Souls by Mr. Broad. And we made a little bit of a bet before this run. If Broad dies, he needs to pay 50 euros for every time that he dies. 15. 15 euro 50 every time that he dies. But if he managed to do it deathless, me, Xita, Frosty, and Lighten are going to donate in total of 90 euros. So good luck, Mr. Vroot. I'm gonna need it. Thanks, host. Uh, right, so can I have the donation intent? Uh, name, character name, thing. Yes, of course. Uh, the name of the character <laughs> will be Lava Boost. All right. Oh, that's caps lock. Lava. La oh my. Lava Boost. There we go. <laughs> Your face is a caps lock. Okay. Uh. <laughs> All right. Because you are so so excited for this run. Can you and only you do the countdown? Alright, alright, alright. Not with the booty, guys. <laughs> alright. Alright. Deathless, huh? Should be easy enough. Alright, so, welcome to the uh, final run of this uh, fantastic event. Almost made um, 500 euros, and after this, 90 euros are gonna be added to this, so 500 is in the bag, guys. Um. Huh? Oh, oh, okay, okay. So, a little bird just told me some the, there's gonna be 100. Donated. So yeah, um, I started Hunter with the mouse key, and if Tech can put my audio a little bit lower, like just a tiny bit, oh yeah, awesome. Um, so I picked Hunter mouse key. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Hunter with the mouse key as a uh, starting hunter. Start with the bow, and the bow is going to be used for a glitch that we call moose swapping. And we're gonna get to that later, but for now, just keep in mind, I need the bow for glitch. Maski is going to be really helpful since Maski is going to make me open up a shortcut that I normally had to go like all the way around or do some really insane platforming uh, to do it fast. Maski saves a lot of time. Alright, I can pick it as starting gift, so that's awesome. Um, so we're going to have a kind of classic asylum here. I'm going to bait out this attack. You can attack me. And we have time for a quick donation? Um, after this. So we're gonna do a plunging attack on this guy, gonna do extra damage. After that, it's gonna be relatively easy. We're gonna do a full stamina bar with R1s. And I'm gonna do R1 and R2 to finish. And tech, or sorry, and host, go ahead. Uh, we got a 1 euro donation from Anonymous saying Mr. Bird has a heart of gold and I won't let anyone <laughs> take it from him. He's also my blood brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, zero. What do I do without you? Alright, so as I am done, and this game is kind of an odd... Um, what do you call it? Like, the difficulty of this run is, is weird. Like, the start of this run is kind of difficult I would say since we do not have a really really powerful um, item called the red tearstone ring uh, for anyone tuning in I'm gonna abbreviate red tearstone ring to RTSR um, a lot because red tearstone ring is just a long word and yeah so uh, hi there's a dragon I'm gonna roll it uh, if you roll it you can like roll the stagger and you don't get staggered and that's fast alright so incoming there is a uh, merchant and we're gonna need a couple of stuff from this merchant 
Uh, we're gonna go and buy the bottomless box and a rapier. The bottomless box, yeah, kind of can see as a storage or a stash or whatever. So you can store stuff in the bottomless box and it's. Oh my. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it kind of won't crowd your inventory. Um, this is not what I'm gonna use it for though. I'm gonna use the bottomless box for a jumping pitch later on. So, kind of a 2013 uh, style uh, logo network here. I'm just gonna run through, open the door with the master key. And in this room, there's nothing, but outside of the room, there is gold pine resin. Yeah. And gold pine resin is uh, basically a bundle of elemental damage that you can put on any like normal, <laughs> normal weapon. So I'm gonna go and apply lightning damage to my uh, short sword here, and that's gonna be my main source of damage for this, these upcoming two parts. Uh, listen to the second arrow. It's gonna just miss me. Thanks for the luck, guys. And. Here you're gonna hug Taurus. Instead of actually hugging him, you're gonna like swing a sword at him. Do it three times, you're gonna stagger another four times and squeeze in the R1. That's the second boss done. Only 24, more to go. So, um, the short sword is a nice weapon, but we're not gonna like complete the game with this. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go and get the Drake Sword. Drake Sword is a nice early game weapon, uh, since it has a lot of base damage just right from the get go, but it doesn't scale with like strength or dexterity or anything. So it's gonna remain just as powerful for the entirety of the run. But that does mean that we have a very powerful uh, or a very decently powerful weapon right from the start. So, we just got the drake so by cutting the tail from the drake. And now we're on our way to uh, uh, the first glitch of this game called Sense Gate Skip. Sense Gate Skip is basically a sequence rake in Dark Souls 1 where we skip ringing both Bells of Awakening to open up the gate to Sense Fortress. Um, how are we gonna do that? You're gonna, you're gonna notice it. It's not, <laughs> you can't really miss this. So uh, I need an enemy for this. So this guy is gonna volunteer. I'm gonna uh, save and quit, which is a, a mechanic in this game that resets enemy aggro and enemy positioning. So there's no one following right now, and this guy's really slow, sir. I'm in a hurry. Oh God. So next to these stairs, there are kill boxes, and in this game. Right above the kill box, there is a death cam box. And the death cam is basically a top down camera view, like you see right now. And it's basically telling the game, all right, this dude is about to die, make this camera look fancy. However, it has some additional, um, additional um, things to it. So what's, what it does, it stops, uh, like the game ex expects you to die. So it's gonna like stop loading any assets that are currently loaded, not loaded. So everything that is loaded stays loaded and nothing new is gonna happen. So the bridge, I'm currently running on the bridge on your way to Sense Fortress. And right now I'm jumping through the gate because it's just not loaded, but the collision is to the ground. So I'm gonna do a save and quit. The game's gonna save my position. And if I look behind me, you're gonna see that the gate is closed and we just skipped like two minutes to run. We also didn't die. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Alright, so sense is uh, all based around cycles. Um, I can be really fancy and say like, oh, I have to make the cycle, but we don't. It just loses like one second if you a little bit slower. It's like really not that important. Oh my god. And it's, it was a nice run, guys. Completely intended to block there and get the car broken and almost dying. Completely intended. <laughs> I'm just gonna heal. <laughs> just to be sure. <laughs> Alright. So. Um, yeah, we're gonna make our way to Iron Golem. And 
I'm gonna be on top mate. I'm gonna do a quit out here really early. So the psychs are gonna be a little bit off, but it doesn't really matter too much. Like there's a boulder coming there, and if you save and quit, oh, the boulder is gonna be reloaded and it's not gonna hit you. So we need some items. It was actually a perfect cycle. I'm totally intended to do that without a dead spot. <laughs> um, so up next, we're gonna go and buy certain items. I'm actually gonna take this rather slow, teaching it out, and we're gonna go to the next uh, major glitch in this in this game. It's called move swapping. Uh, the bow is a very important part of this. So I'm gonna have to rape in my right hand and bow in my left hand. The rapier has a uh, really fast like running attack because it does like two hits in quick succession. The bow has zero running attacks because it's a bow. Why would the bow need a running attack? So there we go. We just move swapped. Uh, if you look at my hut, uh, bottom left, not the hut, but you know what I mean. You see that I'm two-handing my Drake sword in my left hand, which is normally not possible. So what ha what just happened is I over the jump, over the gap, I uh, queued up the action of uh, two-handing the bow. So after I landed, if I stand still, the game is going to go and two-hand the bow. However, before that animation or before that action can be played out, I res uh, I swap the bow out for the Drake sword, and instead of two-handing the bow, it's going to two-hand the Drake sword. And now, if I do a running attack or rolling attack for that matter, it's not going to be the rolling attack from the Drake sword. I also bought some stuff. Oh no, please don't break it. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so now uh, I do like two quick attacks with the Drake Sword. Yeah. This is gonna increase my damage output by a lot. Uh, that's better RNG here. I am not scared. I am not scared at all. What are you doing? Okay, I think we're good. Ish. There we go. Be good, guys. I wasn't scared. I'm never scared. Consistent player. Alright, so. For Iron Golem, as you saw, I'm gonna make him stagger and then I'm gonna like make him fall off the cliff. You need 400 damage uh, below the knee on any of the legs to make him stagger and another 200 to make him fall. If you do that in the correct position, he will fall off the uh, cliff there and kills himself. Good boss design. Nice gimmick. You don't have to kill him that way, but it's just way, way faster. So, we use the Drake Sword for like one boss, and we are gonna like. We're gonna abandon the, the weapon like really fast, since it's not that good of a weapon and we need better stuff. So, um, in this uh, next place, I'm actually gonna pick up a, another weapon. Well, the Dragon Tooth. And the Dragon Tooth I'm gonna use for the rest of the game. Uh, I'm not gonna like drop the, the... Like completely abandon the Drake Sword just yet. Since it's gonna be uh, useful later on. As a Drake Sword uh, R2, like an R1 is just a normal attack. And an R2 for some weapons is special. And the Drake Sword R2 makes uh, enemies fly. Like just like fly backwards. You know? And... That is helpful because sometimes enemies are blocking your way and you can just make them fly off, which is awesome. Um, you might see that, you might also not see that. First, I want to not die to these guys. Okay. These guys are weird, man. Um, the coding of the Painting Guardians is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not sure how it's in the game still. Also, two Painting Guardians just killed themselves. That explains. <laughs> My, like, like that's one part of the story. Like Penny Guardians have, and some other um, enemies have uh, attacks where they backstab you, and that plays out in funny animation, and they backstab you. However, uh, for Penny Guardians, oh, don't snipe me there. For Penny Guardians, um, the backstab attack is like holy. Nothing in this game can prevent the backstab. Um, the Painting Guardian can do another attack, actually, and cancel that attack mid-animation and transform it in a backstab. It's super stupid. Um, it also... I need to level up. 
this dude is. Everything up is nice. Alright, so um, we have iframes, invincibility frames, doing rolls, fog gates, and a couple of other things, and they completely ignore uh, iframes as well. It's really annoying, but we got through it like pretty safely. So, oh uh, no, cargo, go away. Um, so at the bonfire there, uh, normally you don't really take that bonfire in like, like all the routes. However, in this route we actually want that bonfire because we're only gonna do the bosses around that place earlier than normal. And here is gonna be a little trick. Get it? Um, saving quits also like uh, if that the elevator is being called up right now. All right, got it. And. Uh, if like an elevator is riding up and you use the save and quit mechanic um, it resets the elevator back to down so if you quit out um, right in time then the elevator hasn't finished its like going up animation yet and it's gonna be reset to down below and that's gonna save like quite a bit of time later but yeah I was talking about the bonfire I leveled up 27 strength and 20 endurance and the 27 strength is for the dragon tooth because the dragon tooth is a big weapon and the 20 endurance is just kind of because i have it i don't really need health it's not gonna die i don't need health and all right let's see if you need the break sword. it's fast if you don't need it all right you don't need it it's awesome though gotta love it So, that's the end of the Drake Sword, sadly. And now we're gonna go and take the safety bonfire, because if I die, I don't want to lose five minutes. I'm not gonna die. Uh, yeah. So, um... <laughs> Um, let's talk a little bit more about the move swap glitch. Um, the m you can get like the biggest benefit you can get from the move swap glitch is, of course, if you have like a really slow weapon that normally deals like a lot of damage each individual hit and give that weapon a really fast move set, like the rapier. You get like best of both worlds a lot of damage in a short amount of time. But that's what we do. We go and get the dragon tooth, strong weapon, one of the strongest in the game actually, and it's really on the way, so really nice. Good try there, mate. Give me next time. Okay, don't get too cocky here. So, gonna um, use a green blossom that I bought in Sam's Fortress. Uh, the green blossoms uh, increase your stamina regeneration, and it's gonna be nice for the upcoming fight. Um, if you look at the HUD, bottom left, green is stamina, red is health, kind of self explanatory. Alright, so just move swapped and I forgot to use the green blossom. Awesome. Uh, I mean, just get lucky and we don't need it. And of course, we get the worst possible opening that he has. At least it gives me time to use the green blossom. But this is gonna make this fight interesting. Lightning opening is the worst. And he's gonna do it again. So you really want to go and keep a look at Smo, and Smo is a lovely little gentleman, and he does two back steps because why not? And that doesn't kill Ornstein, of course. I knew that. I'm dead. Woo! I'm gonna hear you. Uh, I'm just safe behind the killer. Why? Uh oh. God, guys, what is happening here? Dude, what are you doing? Why are you not doing anything? Oh, I can see you. Oh my god. I want Smo to do something here. Alright, we're good, guys. I had zero nerves. Nope, nope, nope. Alright, and he's not gonna do the long shuffle. He's not gonna do the long shuffle. But at least I'm gonna heal. 
like the dirty little peach that I am. Peach is like another word of safety stretch, so. And now we just tag him with uh, snow to death. If I don't miss. I don't miss. Easy peasy, first try, let's go. I didn't die ever in this game, by the way. Sorry. Right, and we get the Lord Vessel and we get out. So we still need to ring the two belt awakening that I just skipped with the glitch. Um, we do that because um, ringing the bells opens up the ability for us to do a really cool glitch called quantity storage, which I'm also going to do right now. All right. So I'm going to go and buy the crests, the smith box, the shields, and some arrows. Now I'm gonna view the box of the amount of arrows. Then I'm losing magic. I'm gonna wait for this tag box to appear. And I'm gonna buy a bike. Right, that's a lot of stuff happening there. So what I just did is um, the game, like long story short, the game is gonna remember 999. So instead of buying one pike, I now have one pike, but that actually has the weight of 999 pikes. I did that because it's now uh, my inventory is so-called cramped. So nothing with weight. So basically only weapons and armor I can pick up anymore. I can I cannot do that because my inventory is just full. It's a leftover mechanic from Demon Souls. Uh, it's not really supposed to like be in the game, but that you're too lazy to uh, like remove it. So they just made the number really really high. And they expected no one ever like really reach that place. Really stupid because we can do it now. So, um, you're just gonna do some dodging. So, this singular pike weighs 10,000. That's it in the wrong spot. Nice. So, that single pike now weighs 10,000 units instead of 100. Nice. Um, so inventory is cramped and that's gonna be... Okay, someone shot me. Good try. Dark Souls is a very difficult and challenging game. It's gonna happen, and I know it's gonna happen. I'm just gonna like postpone it as long as possible. Alright, so... Um, no comments. All right, so the inventory cramp is going to be used for a glitch called ex equip slot manipulation um, or flexing, because flex is the guy who found it, and you know flexing is a funny word. So, um, but yeah, we call it equip slot manipulation. That's the official. Um, also, I just duplicate a homer bone. It's like you queue up the action of using the helmet bone, but instead of letting it play out fully, you actually go in your uh, inventory and use an SS flask instead, and you get the effect of the helmet bone that the SS is going to be consumed. You didn't actually dupe it, but it basically gives you infinite uses. But this guy is a big, big bully, so we're going to kick him off. This guy actually is gonna kill the firekeeper and like make us not able to use the bonfires and it's bad. It's slow. So we're gonna kill him. So quantity storage. Um, it's gonna be used. You can like buy more than one thing, but you can also sell more than one thing. So uh, we are able to sell more stuff than we have. For example, I have like one iron golem soul. No, I use that one. I have one small soul. And I can sell more of that single small soul um, because of quantity storage. Like the game is like, okay, how many do you have? But you viewed 999 last. And you did some menuing, some great menuing. So it's gonna take 999 instead of one. And that's gonna be used in like 
10 minutes, something like that. Well, let's hope not 10 minutes because that means I'm gonna die. So let's say like five minutes. Ten minutes it is. So we're gonna do blight on drop. Easy peasy. And the Dragon Tooth is a, a special weapon, and special weapon needs special uh, materials to upgrade it with. That are normally kind of hard to come by. So ultimately you only get two uh, so-called dragon skills, and you need uh, five, five or ten. Uh, I think ten, actually. You need ten to uh, upgrade the um, Dragon Tooth fully. Two plus five. So we can get one. We're going to get one because we can uh, use quantity storage to actually dupe. You're gonna see that in a bit, hopefully. So here, I'm not sure if this is faster RTA, but whatever. I'm gonna get one dragon skill, and I'm just gonna, excuse me. We're gonna homer the bone back to this bonfire that we just took. <coughs> like I keep saying throughout the course of the run, I'm not sure if this is faster RTA, since this game is timed using the in-game timer. This in-game timer is probably the fairest way um, of timing this game. It's super, it's super cool here. Like it's actually insane. Um, like the in-game timer basically adds uh, 0.33 to the timer every frame that is rendered. So if you run at a lower FPS, your in-game time is still just as fast as someone who runs at stable 30. So that's really fair uh, towards like console players and people with a bad PC. Console lives matter. Except for the Xbox. Oh, nice. I don't want to go fast anyway. So, here the game, uh, here I, I move swaps too fast. There's like a rhythm to it and as you start out you might think like oh my god it's so hard i have to do it as fast as possible um yes probably but as soon as you get more and more used to it you're gonna notice that it's more of a rhythm thing so this is more of a um, early game boss and i have a late game weapon yeah not really a boss anymore because I didn't die if I would die I would have probably called it the hardest boss in existence but for now we didn't die yet exactly um, so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna take the bonfire so after this is the Quelak, after the Quelak segment that we just done um, I'm gonna go back to Firelink Shrine to go and uh, do quantity storage. And just keep a look at my soul counts. Like, more than five, but less than a million. Uh, right now, I'm putting the green blossoms, black fire bombs, and the uh, dragon scale in the bottomless box. And I'm warping the Firelink. So right now what's gonna happen? It's very little because I'm just gonna face the Lord's Vessel. I'm gonna talk to this guy. I mean talk to this guy. Then he takes me to his place. Tries to explain it, but you know, dialogue is long and boring. We're gonna talk to him again. It's important to talk to him because we need him as a merchant. So now he's a merchant. And we're gonna do quantity storage. So now this item to know is my is in my bottomless box, and now I have 99. Let's see it again. Now keep now now look at my soul count. It's like it's like a bit it's it's, it's a few. Look at my soul count now. Casually 10 million souls, easy peasy. And no, y yes, I mean, what? I'm not cheating. And there we go. 
So if you sell more than you have in your bottomless box, the game is going to underflow and it's going to just give you 99. It's sweet. So we have 99 dragon skills, so we're going to upgrade our dragons with the plus 5, which is now really strong. I'm going to spend some of my 10 million souls. Not going to spend all of them, because it's just going to slow being leveling up, stuff I'm not going to use. I'm get I'm gonna get some specific uh, um, values there. It's not like just some random stuff. Even though it doesn't really matter because I did like basically all my leveling in this entire run. I still have like about eight million souls left. Yeah, I won't ever be short on souls in this run. It's kind of nice, unless I die. But even then, I'm still never. I never have to level up ever again. So. Um, so yeah, the entire reason I'm doing this right now, not that like at the very end like we used to do it. Um, this is not the op most optimal route, by the way. Just putting this out there. Um, is because like since my dragon tooth is at plus five, I'm basically at my maximum damage output for this run, and I already have the bonfire because I have to take it for economy storage. Um, so yeah, I mean, why not do this right now? It's gonna save warps and some speed in general. So this is what we call the manliness test. Because you normally, like, you would be in rotationary range. Uh, that was like the worst attack you can do. Nice. Just don't use the moose swap. So manning this says it because normally you're in red ring range and you have to move swap and dodge his attack at the same time. But I wouldn't have died anyway if I got hit. So this is the place where I'm really scared at because this is one of those places where you can die and you don't really know why. Let's not die and not bother about it. No pressure. So this is called the Fire Sage Elevator Clip and I don't know. My carriage is just as much shaking as I am right now. And yeah, so as you can see, like right below my character, you see that the elevator loads in later. That's because the elevator is part of a different map. So my ground is going to be la loaded first, and then the elevator is going to be loaded later. Now I'm doing a bunch of quit outs because with every quit out, you move backwards a bit until finally you move backwards so much that you can just flip through the elevator. Now we're gonna pray baby Jesus and all the RNG lords. And we're gonna die. Uh, you know, I'm kind of annoyed by this. Since this is like not a death I really have any control over. I, I'm not actually joking. Like my initial positioning was good. Uh, the punching attack just didn't land. It's so, so bad. Thanks, Miyazaki. That's stupid. You can't just both not. Huh? Oh. Whatever, man. I have nothing to lose any. Well, I guess I kind of have. I quote you that exactly nothing happened. Exactly. No, 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 no. Quoting see that nothing happened, guys. I need to, like, put my. Oh, it was. Can, can we, like, since it was actually not my fault, and we're gonna make this bet. No, 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 we're gonna make this bet more interesting because now I basically have nothing on the line because of, you know. Like 15 or 30 doesn't really bother me too much. But, like, yeah. Alright. Let me, let me put it this way. Okay. You do you, man. I just want more. I want less money for me and more money for the Dark Country Society. 
Definitely, it definitely is a win-win. I don't, I don't see anyone losing here. Yes. Hello. All right. So listen up. Since this that was completely out of my control, what about this? Um, instead of uh, making it a hundred, that is gonna be donated. I'm gonna make it two hundred. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna half it. So everyone pays half of their thing. Um, I keep my 15 of that. And there's actually gonna be like that is gonna be skill based instead of just memes. Your thing. Stars is like sound like a really bad bet. That's like double sided, that doesn't make any sense. Like, we're gonna not gonna punish me twice for the same thing. So, it's either gonna like me pay double or you you guys pay half. Yeah, I'm not gonna punish myself twice for the same thing. That doesn't make any sense. Because then I'm just gonna like stick around and like don't bother because you know, why would I pay double if I can pay the same thing? Emoji. You guys call. Wait, how much are you get? <laughs> so how much does it make it? 30? Us. Really should stop doing these things. But hey, at least it's gonna make this thing more interesting, right? Right? Alright, so, getting back to the run. Oh no, I did it in the wrong order. Uh, it's alright. I guess, maybe, I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, I need to do an extra warp. It's not too much of an issue, but... So here, you normally just don't really bother. You just go for Priscilla. However, for enter like the painting to get to Priscilla you need uh, the peculiar dome the pe the peculiar doll it's a really interesting doll it's like a doll you know a doll yeah it's a doll I, I might not have do told you but so, to get this specific item, we're gonna go and have to kill a specific boss called Stray Demon. And you might notice that uh, Fire Stage Demon was actually just a copy paste of Asylum Demon, which is awesome and completely innovative and fun to have a reskin. But now we're gonna have another reskin. It's, it's fantastic. Great quality control. But first, we're gonna have to wait. Sorry for the mic. This can't. <laughs> Never want to run at this place ever again. <laughs> nah. Can't preach. <laughs> oh, guys, come on. Alright, so. We need a crowd mic next time. Alright, so this guy is gonna be in. Nice little fella. No. So yes, some attacks and most of them are bad. This one is a decent one. Right. So far my damage has been 
all right it's nothing like really special you know so we're gonna go and get ourselves the rotation ring but we're actually not gonna get ourselves the rotation ring because getting the rotation ring is pretty pretty slow we're just gonna flex it or use a quick slot in the manipulation it's however you want to call it so all right let me just talk about how the game recognizes items if uh, a ring is going to be equipped the game is going to go into the memory and it's going to load um, the ring right actually the only thing that the game is going to request from its memory is going to be the id of the ring so a ring with like id 100 is going to be the rotation ring and an id with the ring 200 is going to be something else so what if so okay another thing to note is that uh, rings uh, goods like um, the SS flask, homeward bones, throwing knives, stuff like that, are different classes. So they share IDs. Right? So far, so good. Different classes have, can have the same IDs. Now, what if there is a glitch found which makes you equip like throwing knives on the rings uh, slot? Then the game is gonna read the ID of the throwing knife, but gonna uh, give you a ring. Alright? So, um, actually, the um, we went into like um, some research here, and we actually found that we just actually looked at a simple table, but, uh, and we found that the red time soapstone actually shares the same ID as the red tier So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pick up that red sign soapstone that's in the painted world, and we're gonna transform that one into the red tier ring. Easy as that, right? not die first because these crow people can be really scary don't fall off just kill the people sorry guys right, you're good i wasn't scared this thing was all right so we're gonna go and grab ourselves red and soapstone and drop here and not die all part of the plan and now Gonna use this, use some magic, dialogue, red sign soapstone, or RTSR. So now I just equip the red, the red sun ring, and that's gonna, uh, just don't even bother. I don't even know how it works, I just do what the world record holder does. It's, I no, actually, like, the specifics of this glitch are really, really weird. If you want to find out, go to uh, speedsouls.com and go and click on uh, Dark Souls uh, tab and you can you can find out about it. It's a pretty cool glitch. Pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, the Red Tearson Ring, what does it do? It gives you... Uh, like it's just like It gives you double damage. It's already, already nice. I the only thing is... Why does he hurry to use that? Can I use an audio cue to know where she is? Um, so the rotation ring doubles your damage if you are below 20% health, which is going to be pretty nice since um, I, at least I'm going to be on the edge of my seat doing a lot of boss fights, because every hit is a kill, on my end, and that's spooky. So that's the entire reason why I bought 999 pikes, remember that one? Uh, inventory being cramped is all part of it. So, now these 999 pikes um, weigh a lot, but they're gonna like, um, like make my inventory a little bit harder to navigate. So I'm gonna go and put them in the, okay, in the bottomless box. Actually gonna use it for its purpose. So like say that I make a mistake and I remove the rotation ring. Because this red tear ring is actually the red time soapstone, remember? Um, I can just do it again. But I need to remove... The, um, but I, I want to remove the pikes for now, because it's gonna make menuing a whole lot easier. So, yeah, we're gonna go and open up this door with a key that we bought from the... Blacksmith. And we're gonna do the save and quit to uh, reset the enemy aggro and positioning. 
so we can use this bonfire ASAP. So, we're gonna put our 999 pikes in the bottomless box, and we're gonna go and continue. So basically from now on stuff is going to get spooky because of rotation ring setups. And the first thing that's going to have a rotation ring setup is the upcoming segment. Uh, we're going to go and kill the Hydra. And the Hydra is normally 3 hits. It's definitely worth to save that 1 hit. So we're going to use the rotation ring. Um, and since uh, fall damage in this game is percentage based. And it's going to be influenced by how much you equip. I'm going to equip a whole lot of heavy stuff. Then roll down. And voila. You can see that the rotation ring is active by the little icon like next to the boot. Uh, on top of that, my character is literally glowing. It's also like a good giveaway that the rotation ring is now active. So, the Hydra fire. I'm gonna throw like a bomb in order to actually get a zero effect. Run. I like 99 bombs now. That's true. Alright, uh, I would have done like the normal strat where you actually are not like doing really pinchy strats. <laughs> Look away. Alright, cool. So now I healed up. Um, because like the Dragon 2 plus 5 is so strong. You really don't need the rotation ring for the skill. I think. Actually, never being this careful, so I'm actually not sure. But we're gonna find out. So, if you kill the Hydra, this Golem spawns. Alright, cool. And the Golem has this lovely lady. And as long as you exhaust her dialogue, you can enter the DLC. If you kill this, this lady, you cannot enter the DLC, which is a slight problem in an all bosses speedrun. So, um, for now, we're gonna go and kill Sif. Alright, never mind. Ah, alright, good. I was too slow with swapping out my rings. We're just not gonna use the radiation ring. So, from the Hydra, I got also uh, a ring. It's called the Discrown Ring. And the discard ring hauls my HP, and if you like swap it in and then swap it out again, you actually have half your HP. And that's gonna be make a lot of rotation ring setups a lot easier. Um, like basically, almost. Uh, no, yeah, like except for one um, setup, it's all gonna use either fall damage or fall damage combined with the discard ring. It's really convenient. So, um, yeah, um, Sif's next. Um, Sif is a puppy, normally. However, this this annoying dog really likes to jump. Really likes to jump. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, let's get lucky and get 200 jumps. Because that's how it goes. And I also got lucky and I quote unquote died in Ice Age Elevated Punch. So, yeah. Um, you initiate the fight by walking up to his sword, but there's like a secret behind here, it's a ring, and the ring uh, increases the damage you do from repost. That's two! That's three! <laughs> oh god. Man. Yeah, that's four. Why can you not be a good dog, man? Really not that big of a problem. So yeah. We now are gonna go and kill Butterfly and see some superior Dutch aiming. And that basically means miss all the fire bombs that you have and wait for the butterfly to land. So the butterfly is a yeah, of course flies because it's a butterfly. Yeah. 
Blue Star. And it's basically the, the like the nemesis of any melee nemesis of any melee rap. Because you actually cannot do too much about it. You just have to wait for butterfly to land, then you can go ham. Um, so what are we gonna do? Gonna wait. Butterfly is uh, invulnerable to a certain state. Now I'm just gonna throw five bombs, and that's the one miss. Okay, we hit one. Need to so much, dude. Another one missed. Why are you? Don't move. Another one missed. Come on! <laughs> oh my god! Butterflies, stay put. You have other attacks. Yeah, and she's gonna land. I caught it. Nice. Speed, space, run. So yeah, with the butterfly dead, um, we're pretty much set to go. Like, we did uh, all the like the forest bosses, I guess you can call them, like Civ, uh, Hydra, uh, butterfly. They're like all the forest bosses, and we kind of want to go into the DLC from there because it's like basically the fastest, uh, the fastest bonfire to go to the DLC. Um, however, we need the key for the DLC. Well, it's not really that hard to go into the DLC in Dark Souls One. You need to do some specific events. So the first thing is kill the Hydra. Check. After that, we have to kill. Uh, we have to exhaust the dialogue from that lovely lady. Check. Um, doing that uh, gives the upcoming. Uh, Crystal Golem, a uh, one-time drop called the Broken Pendant. And the Broken Pendant is the key to the DLC. <coughs> so those events have to be done in order to actually get the drop from them. So now we get to just have to kill the Broken Pendant, and after that's done, we can enter the DLC. And the DLC is without a doubt the hardest part of this run. Use a green blossom because why not? So you see it on the right, you see the golem there, guarded by a hollow. Musa should kill him and I'll get the gold pendant. Awesome. So now we're good to go and we're off to the DLC. Well, not after the DLC, but we can now enter the DLC. So uh, you haven't had a glitch in a long time. Well, actually, 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 we don't have a glitch right now, but never mind. Uh, it's a secret of the break, though. Uh, called the Juke Skip. Normally, you are like supposed to um, go and die to see it there. However, if you do some smart parkour in here, you can actually skip that, and that saves the entire prison area. Um, like getting. Um, you can skip the entire prison area, and that saves around 3 minutes. It's pretty significant. Hello. On top of that, you skip dying. So, like, normally you die at least once in this game if you don't use this skip. Um, because, yeah, you have to die in the seized room to, like, progress. But yeah, we can skip that. It's one part. Oh, I'm so scared there. You can actually land on the other side of that place. I'm making this stuff so clutch. It ha doesn't have to be this clutch. And I didn't even hear it. Nice. So, um, yeah. This is like, it's like one of the oldest skips in the book. It's really cool. You can pull it off. Awesome. Dangerously close. There we go. First try. I thought it was someone clapping and I was like really happy for a second and then I just. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. It means a lot. So. <coughs> now we skip dying to the Duke. Seeds, whatever, however you want to call him. 
And this is the first time you're gonna see me use the discount ring to do a setup. So the game now considers this small bit of HP as my 100%, so fall damage is actually gonna be reduced. Like, I'm not taking as much fall damage as I would normally take, I actually take half of it. So, you have like three ways of getting fall damage. If you like ring swap, so equipping and unequipping, you take a lot of fall damage. If you equip the dust ring and then take a fall and then later unequip it, you take like less. And you can take like not, a, not much at all by just never um, equipping it. So you're at 100% HP. That's not entirely true, but let's believe it. So I just did a setup there, and as you can see right now, my health is like really low. If I then, because the game still considers this as like my now 100% HP, I didn't activate the rotation ring yet. However, if I swap it out, swap the discard ring out, or like anything else, then the game is gonna like give me my entire HP pool back. I'm gonna do right now. And I have red history. So I'm gonna do a specific pathing here to like, these clans can actually like enter the boss fight with you and kill you. I'm gonna try and avoid that. By doing, I kinda wanted him to do an attack there. They both didn't, this can be bad guys. Damage is okay, damage is okay. He's homeward bone, and we're out. Okay, okay. Uh, so, like I said, unlock the DLC right now. Let me go to the DLC. And this guy. Oh boy, this guy. So, uh, there is a Dark Souls 1 uh, tournament going on right now on speed gaming organized by myself and typo and <laughs> like a couple of days ago <laughs> I had my um, my first tournament match and the upcoming boss has a couple of oh my god don't do it don't do it don't do it oh no oh my lord <sighs> why like this Like I told you, I'm never stressed, ever. So where did I drop again? Take it slow. Do the drop correctly. Eat. Run. There we go. So yeah, um, you want this guy to not do lightning attacks. Guardian, if you can hear me, don't do it. So, in the marathon, or in the marathon, in the, in the tourney, this guy did 12 lightning attacks in a row. And normally one is considered kind of bad. So yeah, I, got, I didn't get that lucky. Irrelevant. <laughs> I still won the match though. These two, I beg of you, don't do it. Right, this looks good. Oh my god. He did it. He did it. What a legend, what a champ, what a god! Thank you, Guardian Dragon. Alright, so. Um, it was pretty alright damage, one shot. 
So here I am gonna take the bonfire. <laughs> I might do the RTSR setup. Like some bosses actually get more difficult if you don't use the right ring. Thank you. Because you just completely destroy them and don't give them any like chance to attack you. Um, however, I'm kind of scared of the RTSR setup because if you get like a stored roll. Which is a if you fall and you mash circle, you normally get a roll, but the game can decide to like completely eat it and not give it to you, which is nice. Lawless. So um, yeah, I guess I'm not doing it. So I might still die though. If I die, I'm gonna do it. Oh, well, after of course. I mean, technically, death is also a red ring setup since you are below 20% HP. I mean, never specified the amount of HP I've left. So, we have a. Well, it's not new anymore, but one of the most recent glitches is called Fall Damage Cancel. Uh, if you do a plunging attack, like I'm gonna do right now. Roll, you can kind of normally that falls lethal, uh, but you can like I frame oh. <coughs> the falling damage basically. So instead of dying so there, you just don't die. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. So here, you normally set up the rotation ring. I mean, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so we're gonna uh, eat a blossom and see what the tourist has to give. Go for it now. <coughs> like if anyone from my community is watching, I'm sorry. Oh, because um, if you don't do this, like if you actually use the red tear ring like a man. Oh my god, good thing. If you then it's a two shot. It's two move swaps and he's dead. So yeah. I'm just gonna um, go and apologize for that. But on the other hand, I mean, I like money. I don't like having money. And these guys apparently don't. So. <laughs> oh no. So. Like, uh, actually, the only like quest line that we do is the Calamite quest line. In order to fight Calamite normally, Calamite is a boss, by the way. Um, you have to go and trigger him first, so you have to and trigger as in like set the flag of you actually being in the area long enough. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and trigger Calamite, and after we did that, we're gonna use the Homer Bone, and that's gonna like advance in the quest line. It's really important that you do this. Here you can hear him. So, you might have saw that Calamite flew over like the little thing, what's it called? I don't know, English is a hard language. Um, he flew over and you can see him disappear and that means that you can go and use the Homeward Bone. And now we actually triggered Calamite and the flag has been said that we've been in the area long enough so we can advance the questline. Next part of the questline is getting an item called um, uh, Kresky. And the Kresky is gonna be acquired by killing a Mimic, which is a fake chest. And I'm gonna do that right now. So, Hidden Body, I bought this from a mushroom. Yes, there's nothing weird there. Uh, I bought it from a mushroom, and uh, it basically. It's your body. Yeah, that's right. So, enemies uh, don't see you. That's easy, and that's gonna make for some easier, like, I guess it's gonna make this way through a lot easier. 
And I'm 99% sure it saves time because the world record does it. So I go to throw Lloyd Salesman, and Lloyd Salesman's actually open the mimic. And there we go, got the Kresky. Why me monkey following me here? Oh my. Go away, dude. Get lost. That guy really is scary since he can't just kill you there. That's why I healed up before. So, this is what we call the hell bridge because it's actually a hell to go through if you don't use hidden body. But with hidden body, it's kind of for sure. Not that hard. So, only thing now is to. Um, Go and dash a chain prisoner here. Did he reach me? No. I'm gonna use a save and quit. Um, this has two effects. One, the elevator is now instantly up. And the second effect that this has is this elevator normally contains an enemy, and with the save and quit, you actually like get rid of that enemy. The enemy is only there the first time you trigger that elevator. <coughs> Are you kidding? Of course, I'm gonna take this one. Part. It's not like it's a speedrun or anything. It's slow walk. Of course. Of course. That's no. Because <laughs> if it's not subestimate, there's a really high chance that I die. So yeah. gonna like man up here. We're just gonna use Arcee, sorry, who cares? I don't like money anyway. So here we skip the uh, fog gate and the cutscene. I'm gonna use a blossom. I'm not gonna punish this, no way. Worst attack that he has. No, I'm not yellowing this. That's it. Use homeward bone and get out. Only noobs need bonfires. And me. So this is the only thing that is really lost is an extra warp and a rest, which is... Five seconds. No, more. Six or seven. Um, so we can now wrap up the Calamite questline here by going and talk to Hawkeye Goth. Um, which is without doubt the most badass cutscene in this entire game. But sadly, exactly, just skip it. It's kind of sad that um, uh, cutscenes, it's also kind of weird that cutscenes count towards in game time. Because in that case, we actually could have watched it in a run, but you can't. Like, the entire world freezes as soon as you start a cutscene. Like, if you have a buff or something, the duration of the buff is gonna be paused. However, the in game timer for some reason isn't, which is really, really sad. Hold on. Squeaky chair. Um, so we're just gonna make our way to um, Calamite. Um, you can use Hidden Body here, but it's like the downside of using Hidden Body is that you need to get rid of the Moose Swap and you have to Moose Swap again. And the only benefit that it really gives you is you won't get hit by dogs that often. Someone is either passed out or really relaxed. <laughs> or drunk. <laughs> That's also a possibility. Alright. Fair enough. I'm not here to judge. 
So here we're gonna go and equip the Discount Ring again. Um, Whoa, well, after the four gates, really important. Eat a Green Blossom and again, pray to the RNG gods because this fight is quite something. Give me the slow one. Ah, uh, no, not that one. Uh, I'm dead. Woohoo! Not dead. Come on, tell me what are you doing? Lights? Blood? That's it. And uh, that's the hardest part done. Not scared at all. So, we rested Firelink here because we only have to clean up Firelink and that's it. Um, so, we're gonna do the Firelink bosses, which is Kepra and Gaping, Pimbo and Nito, Four Kings and Gwyn. So it's quite a few left, but most of them are like uh, Capra Gaping is like really close to each other, Pin Monito is like really close to each other, and the Four Kings is not that far either. It's true. Not lying yet. So what we do is another sequence break called Lower Network Skip, even though we don't skip Lower Network, because consistent naming schemes. Um, we heal up there. Can be a dog. Okay, I killed both of them. It's kind of unique. I'm giving the stone armor because it gives me poise. Destroy Capra Demon and do a quit out. A well timed quit out actually teleports me outside of the boss area and it resets enemy aggro. In um, normal runs, it's obviously nice since in game time. Um, so you get, you don't have to walk that bit. In this run, it's nice because no aggro. Yeah, so pretty sweet. Right, let's see if we can get the sack. Sack is like the most fashionable piece of armor you can ever get in this game. Ah, didn't get it. The butcher drops it. It's actually just a sack with two holes in it. The depth is like actually really short, like in any first page ever. I, I don't think there was a single person who likes the depth. It's like such a maze. Um, in this first in your first page at least, you really don't like it. Um, however, you can just go there, slide down and you're at the boss. It's really easy. Um, yeah, you skip a lot of the area, and the area is pretty cool, but it's because of the maze, and people don't like mazes, which are like confused. And uh, like a little bit of small tech, you see me like use a homeward bone like very at the very end, as long as you get the souls bottom right corner. After you, um, it's actually the victory chief message and the souls that both confirm that you actually killed the boss. And you can like time your homeward bone in such a way that at the very end of his death animation, you can already like teleport away. And that saves a bit of time. Up next is Pinwheel. If the chat is really funny, they're gonna make a Pinwheel joke. How it's the easiest or the hardest boss in the game. If you kill a stream perfect and stuff like that. Cheetah also has some great sense of humor, so he might also take it. Um. All right. oh. <laughs> so you do the quit out there to reset enemy aggro. Um, it's slower RTA by like a couple of seconds. Uh, however, it makes the life a lot easier.
I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. I made it far enough, like, except for the um, fire stage elevator clip death, which was just super stupid. Um, there wasn't really any major mistakes in this run. Yet. Your time and moose up again. I pin you. I pin you. I opened up my menu there because normally um, the game gives you like this kind of pop up message saying, Oh, by the right of kindling, you know, may you like kindle your bonfire above like the standard level or whatever. I haven't seen anything in a long time, don't mind me. Uh, but if you press start, you never get it. And that pop up message actually blocks you from um, climbing the ladder instantly. So if you open up your start menu, you can save a couple of seconds there. Pretty sweet. Doing with the giants is like really, really bad in your first time around. But you can just hug your right side there and they won't hit you. Uh, you just walk a little bit to the left, keep going forward. Roll to the right, roll to the front. You jump. Yes, you jump. It's alright. And drop in this hole, and it's done. If you get the jump, it's like even easier. But the pressing a circle button in the right timing is difficult. So Nito is coming up, and Nito is not really. I wouldn't really call it hard. But Nito can be like a troll. Like Nito has to move towards you and not scream. If he screams, he stops moving in general. If he... Like Nito can also just like walk around at where he stays, where he spawns basically, and like just not go towards you. It's really weird. The reason why you not can not just go for him is because in the back of the boss room there are like these big skeletons and they they do a lot of damage so there are also going to be smaller skeletons and i'm going to put on stone armor because stone armor gives me poise and poise makes me basically not care about small skeletons like the small skeletons can like do damage to me and like i can just finish my attack i don't need to just grab Wait it out. Rain for kids. It also gives me some nice resistance here. For uh, yeah, resistance against the boss. Get it done. And we actually only have two bosses. We have um, four kings, and then we have Quinn. I hope you guys people is ready. I can still die to the upcoming skip though. Like, it's really possible. This upcoming skip is kind of a pain. Haha. <laughs> 60 death, huh? Double or nothing? <laughs> no. It's not like. I was thinking about it though. So the skip is here. There's still this really rare occasion when you slide off right as you spawn in. But I didn't get that. Nice. So now we're out of bounds. So sliding up there, we bypass a uh, death plane. Like, basically, what happens is 
you slide off and slope damage is like if you slide off the slope then the damage is going to be applied later so if you quit out in time um, the damage is not applied yet but your position is already saved and so you can survive that so here i'm going to drop an item and the item is going to help me later in the boss fight since it's really hard to tell where i am Now I can just see the item, and the second king is actually going to be spawning right around here. Wait, wait. Down. Only Gwyn left. I'm actually really happy about this run. Like this is one of the few runs I've <laughs> I've done here that are like not bad, yeah. Let's just keep it up there. We're gonna offer the souls to Lord Vessel. Gonna open up the door. And an open door gives us free passage to Gwyn. Uh, actually, gonna go and parry Gwyn because Gwyn is the only boss you can parry. And parrying is cool. It's also fast. So. so here we're gonna go and take uh, damage from this knight uh, if he gives me the right attack, of course. Oh, it does. It does. And now um, it's just basically making your way through it. Through here. This guy can actually still kill me. It, it will be a good meme. Okay. <laughs> this guy has a fast attack that's actually, actually fast. Um, as the name kind of suggested. So yeah, on our way to Grin now. That attack has some weird hitboxes, man. Mm. Should be enough stamina. No, never mind. Regenerate a bit more. Oh, should need to these two. The only thing that can now kill me is Gwyn and a Frey Perfect Stab for the forget. One gets ready on time. That's true. And time. This this is This is the hardest game of all time, you know? And the awesome credits. Um, since I still technically died, you're not gonna be the only one. You're not gonna be the only one. I'm gonna be donating my 15 euros and 50 cents as well. As like kind of a decent person that I am. But yeah. That's it. Uh, run was pretty decent, actually. I would have definitely take this any day as a marathon run. Um, underestimates like, as well. And um, I want to thank thank you guys for having me once again. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna have some quick uh, announcements and stuff, and I'm gonna head it over back to host. <laughs>